few minutes. Happy New Year in a few seconds. Okay, everybody, I am waiting for people to log on, and I'm very, very, very excited about today. In fact, it might be one of my favorite presentations that we've ever brought to you. It is about my dear, dear friend, Freddie Moran. She is an amazing woman. Where we celebrated her 90th birthday on thequiltshow.com, it was uh, Sujata Shaw's show. And recently, we did, John and I and Jean Wells put together a piece, and I'll tell you a little bit more about it before we get started, but I... I love it. All right. Okay. So starting every new year, everybody has resolutions except me. Hey, Rondi. So, so I saw this and I thought, my thing is if you're going to make a resolution, just do it and get on with it. So, but usually it revolves around exercise, right? So when I saw this, I just cracked up, cracked up. Hey, babe. You've been sitting at your machine all day. I thought you said you were going to exercise, but I am exercising. I'm running out of thread right now. <laughs> and we all know that we're supposed to be walking and this and that. Well, I'm not going to help you excuse not to walk, <laughs> okay? So before we get going, you some of you have sent me images and stuff like that that I want to share with you before we get into Freddie's thing. And I'm going to tell you right now, Freddie's thing is about 26 minutes long, but it is worth every single watching second, all right? So Trish sent me this, and she's finished it. And what she told me was that she loved the embroidery and she's made it into a little wall hanging. And it also got her through, it got her through COVID and it got her through breast cancer. So there you go, right? Yay. And we are going to be doing more embroidery. I'll talk about that in a moment. All right. And then Ruth sent me this. Oh my gosh. Is this not beautiful? She decided, this is a BOM, right? And she decided, I'm going to get my notes. Um, not to, it's homeward bound. It's no longer available that, you know, we have our block of the month every year and you get it free as a member for 49 bucks, you know, a year along with all the shows. She left the border or the big white spot, whatever you want to call that for fabulous quilting. I can't wait to see what she does with it. So please keep us posted, Ruth, please, please, please. Then Colleen sent me this, and Colleen had zero intention of doing the tie project that we have just wrapped up, and uh, somebody, her pastor died, and the wife of the pastor said, would you make something, and that led her to the ties, okay? But what, one of the things that I think is incredibly interesting about this is the background. We've seen people use shirts, for, excuse me, shirts for the background, but not cut up like this. And I think this is extremely satisfying to look at. Rather than a big hunk of fabric, it's very subtle. It's beautiful. So Colleen, thank you for sending these pictures. It's just, I'm trying to tickle people's creativity here. All right. And then we have Peggy. She uh, is so inspired by Jen Kingwell. And she sent me this picture after, you know, we talked about this year's BOM with Jen Kingwell, which of course is free if you're a member. And I think this is absolutely stunning. All right. So as you know, Bernina is a sponsor of thequiltshow.com and we survive on three different legs. All right. One is Bernina. They have been very generous since the beginning. Thank you. And then number two would be you guys. I'm assuming that most of you here are subscribing members. If not, please do, because this chair doesn't stand out, stand up without three legs. So you've got Bernina, got you, and then you've got thequiltshow.com. And that probably would lead us to the store. So all three work together so we can continue to bring you this wonderful stuff. Well, one of the things that we do is we meet with Bernina, or John does, and Kristen once a month. And Gavin told us about a sale that I want to pass on to you 
uh, just in case you've been wondering if you want to do this, okay? And we're talking about the CAFE machines. Oh, no, first, I'm sorry, so wrong. The B435, that's the first. That is an astonishing price on that. And if you had a young sewist, or maybe even you wanted a travel machine or something, you might want to think about this. But then also, uh, CAFE, um, a lot of us have been eyeballing. I know Mary Kay got this. I don't know that she got all the accessories. Excuse me, but this is the baby CAFE, the 475. Excuse me while I take a sip. And it's just a great package, all right? But then the big girl CAFE, there's, this is the 500 series, 570. Uh, and here is some stuff that goes with it. But they have a lot of different options with the 570. So you might want to go to your local dealer or get on their website and see what's going on. And don't forget, if I send one of these to you before you get it, you can get a hundred bucks back from Bernina directly. John? 475 QE. John said 475 QE. Thank you. <laughs> Anyways, we all know Bernina makes great machines. If I get this in your hands before you buy it, you get a hundred bucks back straight from Bernina. Just so you know, this is for any purchase over a thousand bucks. All right. And then, oh, I want to tell you about this. So on the first, Barbara did a kick, wonderful, wonderful introduction to uh, this year's Pick a Petal by Jen Kingwell. And let me, let me go up here so you can see a full picture of it. I will give you a State of the Union on Pick a Petal by Jen Kingwell. We have kits left, not a thousand ton of them, but we have kits left, and the kits are not exactly matched to this, but they are beautiful. The kit comes with embroidery thread, too. What it does not come with are the templates. There are acrylic templates that come with it. We ordered initially, we try and make the best guess that we can, and then we ordered um, more, and now we've ordered more. So people are really grooving on this quilt, right? This is what you need to know. They are coming from Australia, and you can only get them through us. Our guess is that they will be here towards the end of the month. And what you need to do if you're interested, we don't want your money right now. We're not interested. But if you want those um, templates, go on the store and put it in wish list, and then we will contact you immediately when we get them in. Again, we're not committing you. We aren't asking for your money, okay? We're not at all. And if you're getting a kit, uh, you you might want to, ugh, I don't know how to handle that, whatever, but... Um, I think we'll be okay. I'm not sure. The kits cannot be duplicated. There are about a hundred different fabrics that are not exactly in the quilt. And I will tell you, Kristen let blood over this. All right. So before we get into the video, which I am so excited with Freddie, what happened was Jean Wells is one of my mentors, Jean Wells and uh, Diana McClun. Everybody has those in their life. And if you've never been to the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show on the second Sacred Saturday, this is a destination point for you, all right? It's been going on for, this year will be 49 years. It is, Gina owns the store, the Stitch and Post in Sisters, and that's how the whole thing got inaugurated. But it has since grown up into a separate nonprofit corporation, and it needs money, all right? So she called me and she said, she said, would you please do a video with Freddie? Because she's, what they do is they have a luncheon in December or some sort of presentation, and they always show something. And I said, yeah, because, I mean, I love Freddie. I love her. If you've never seen her house, <clears throat> all right? So I said, yes. And the meeting was the beginning of December. I don't know if I said that already. And what happened was then I found out Jean Wells was in the hood. And I said, Jean, you really need to do this interview. And she's like, ah. But it is one of the most beautiful packages that John has put together for us. And if you've never been in her house, you're going to flip your lid. Uh, secondly, 
if you have been in her house, you're going to flip your lid. So let's go take a look at it. Again, it runs a little bit longer, but it is worth every single second. And yes, Darlene, the templates also have the applique things. Okay, here we go. Hi, everyone. I'm Alex Anderson, and I am in the hilltops of Orinda. Oh, it's even better than that. I'm at the home of Freddie Moran. Many of you know Freddie. Her celebration of color living is just over the top, and you'll see that as we go and visit with her. But wait, double trouble. Jean's here too. Listen, before we go in, we're going to get a bunch of pictures for you, but really keep your eyes peeled. I mean, look at this. There's art everywhere. Freddie knows how to do it. I'm not going to knock on the door. I'm just going to go inside and see if I can find those two. Hey, is anybody home here? I think, I think they're in the sewing room, but listen, before we get going, I want to take just a look around here. This place is spectacular. And who has a tree growing in their front hall? Remember, Freddie says red is a neutral. And I'll tell you what, I think all these colors are in neutral as your eyes get to feast on all the glory. Let's go head down the hall and see if they're in the studio. I bet they are. Let's go. Before we get started, it's really important for me to tell you what Freddie means to me. I can remember ha having Freddie in my class a million years ago at the Cotton Patch. One million. She was so driven and so in focus that I think she had the quilt done before the first day was over. I mean, I don't know, but this person puts on her blinders, gets an idea, and runs with it. She's also been a wonderful cheerleader to me. I'm so lucky to have her in my life. But also, I have Jean Wells in my life. She too has been wind beneath my wings. I, don't, I wouldn't be here today without Jean. Let's just put it that way. She got me to write my first book. She has always supported me. And I feel honored that I get to introduce you to these two wonderful, beautiful women, Freddie Moran and Jean Wells. I am so thrilled to be here today with some of my favorite people also. And I've known Freddie for a really long time. And I have to say, when I come in this room, it feels magical to me. And I remember years and years ago when I said to Freddie, um, do you ever go in your room and not have something you want to do? And she said, well, I just pick up two pieces of fabric and sew them together. And you're going to see a lot of beautiful work today. And I want Freddie to share part of what she's been doing in these last few years with these wonderful faces. I um, made a promise to myself when I got well that I would make a face every day. And I did that for several years until um, my quilt ran out of space. And so now I do... Um, a quilt about every, about two a week. And um, I really feel that um, some of the quilts, the faces are better than others. Like you making a quilt, some of your quilts are better than others. Some you might like and other people don't like, but it's okay, it's the process. Mm -hmm. And what you do, what I'm doing is keeping my creative spirit going. So um, I love making the faces. I don't, I was inspired. Uh, I took a class right before I got sick and it was called mainly Matisse. And Matisse did some faces and I didn't, I had no idea of copying them. I just liked the idea. Some are better than others. Um, I always say to my students, it's okay to make a lousy quilt. 
Yeah. Everybody makes one or two. You just work away at your art, uh, um, at your artistry, and if you work hard enough and long enough, you will come out a winner on the other side. Well, you know, Freddie, I'm thinking about something that you are really well known for. And that is red is a neutral. Yes. And I can remember the first time I heard it and I started thinking, oh, well, how would you put red with this color or that color? But you're going to see today an amazing group of quilts and artistry that really focuses on red. So what's your response to that, Freddie? Well, I, um, I don't consciously do any of that. I just, I do what I feel like I should do for myself. And if others like it, that's a bonus. But um, that's not why I work the way I do. When I first started making quilts, I would take a class I took uh, a hundred Jean Wells classes, <laughs> and I noticed uh, that red was very predominant in my quilts. And so I did a little experiment for myself. I put a true red piece of fabric on the desk, and I threw all these colors on, mm -hmm. and everything looked good. Now. You can't say that for beige. <laughs> beige and lime green don't do it. Um, red and beige do it. Red and lime green do it. But um, I just found that the key for me of making artwork is to stay with in my palette. I, if you ask me, to make a beige quilt, I would have to say, I'm sorry, I don't do that. It's been a process that has kept me creative and going. I am now 93 years old, and if you had told me 20 years ago that I would still be making artwork, I would have said you were crazy. But as I look at it now, as long as my health holds, I'll be able to make quilts for the rest of my life. As I say, not all of them are great. Some are good, some are really lousy, and some, once in a while, you get a great one. So what I've done is I just keep making them, and that's the category they come in, they come in. Um, lousy, so-so, and great. And you can't make a great, I can't make a great quilt every single day. So um, it's okay, I've allowed myself the permission to just work my creativity and not worry about um, whether people are gonna like it or, that's the other thing. You can't worry about other people liking your work. <laughs> it's your work and not theirs. And you are probably working twice as hard at your work than they are. So um, I just think that, thank God for quilt making. <laughs> They're the nicest people you could ever meet. And they um, want you to win. They are my my friend Alex. Um, we met years ago, and we pick up on our friendship just like we left it up ten ten weeks ago with Jean. Jean, I go up to sisters. I used to a couple of times a year, and now Jean comes down here a couple of times a year. So it's really um, just a blessing to have found quilt making and how it's carried me through all these years of my life.
So I'm very, very lucky. Here we are in Freddie's marvelous bedroom. I remember when she moved from the upstairs down to this room and created this magical place. Um, on the bed, you see uh, one of her uh, house quilts. And that was her very first book was house quilts. And John's going to show you some close-ups of some of this. And it's just a really fun quilt. And I want to say this, that Freddie is not afraid of any fabric. <laughs> and you see such a variety of content in the prints that she uses. And you look at the quilt behind me, um, and I'm going to have Freddie tell you a story about it, but it's her very first collage quilt. And I just think it's spectacular. And I love the scale that she used in that piece. So Freddie, tell me about it. Okay, I made lots of quilts and I mm -hmm. made for Neil. And he would say, well, that's nice. So when <laughs> I was working on this, he said, oh, I want that one. Oh. So I kept going, I, I finished making it. And I was, even I was stunned at what turned out. I just, well, it's dramatic. I never have a plan. Mm -hmm. I just go respond, ahead don't you? And um, I'll pick up a piece of fabric and I'll use it. It doesn't, I don't put it back. <laughs> I make myself use it. Uh -huh. So if you do that enough times, it all works. Mm -hmm. So that's a lot of what went on there. Yeah, I could look at this forever. Well, I think we should go look at Neil's quilt, other the quilt. other quilt you made him, because I love that one, too. Yeah. I mean, Neil was a lucky guy. Freddie, why don't you share what you told me about how you started with this quilt, with that one piece of fabric? Well, I, had, I didn't know what I was going to do with that, but and I loved this, these red walls, so I figured that once Neil got tired of the collage, we could move it and move another quilt in. So um, I had taken a class from Alex and I had made a, a star quilt and I did my own stuff. I did stars over here and um, maybe a few houses here and some large stars over here. And um, so when it came to making this, I thought, well, I want a large scale and this Texas star. And then I love the four corners with stars. So it was really, um, again, I would pick up a piece of fabric and I used it. Um, I, I get a kick out of students that they go through their bag and they find a piece and they use it instead of just instinctively picking up a piece of fabric and you have to use it. There's no excuse. You have to use it. Now whether you put a piece of fabric over it, it's another matter, but you use it. So um, I think the more you get in tune to grabbing and using instead of rooting around, finding the per perfect um, rose quilt and using it, that doesn't go. You just put your hand in, get a piece of fabric, and use it. So that way, um, there's none of this matchy-matchy. Uh, um, it just becomes scrappy, but with enough organization that you know what you're doing. So um, this quilt was really fun to make because I knew it would look great against these walls and um, it also allowed me to repeat colors 
which I didn't do very, very often. So the red was three pieces and, um, and the background was three pieces. So I just really, um, I had a really good time making this quilt and just pulling fabric and then making sure there was enough to go around. And um, I made uh, another, I made another quilt this size and I did it in cool colors and I saving it for when my granddaughter gets married and um, that's, those are her pellets. And um, I just think that, again, I made a lot of quilts to come up with, with a really good quilt. So it doesn't happen just like um, magic. It just doesn't, you have to do the work. Freddie, what is the first thing that you felt when you came to the very first quilt show? That I couldn't wait for more. <laughs> um, I, I had been told that the quilts were hanging outside and mm -hmm. inside, and, but you have no idea of the impact it makes um, emotionally for me. Mm -hmm. I brought tears to my eyes to see <clears throat> all of those quilts blowing in the wind. It was just over the top for me. And um, <coughs> that year I went and I took a class. And I don't remember, I took five days of classes. I don't <laughs> remember um, all the teachers, but it was great. And so the next year, you asked me to teach. Mm -hmm. So um, I started teaching at um, the quilt show, and um, and I showed my quilts every year. And actually, I am still showing. That's quilts. right. And um, Dawn, the director, has a whole bunch in her office. So yes, they're going to be up online for people to purchase here right. shortly. Right. So anyway, um, it, um, the, I would say that the quilt show added a whole new dimension to my quilting experience. <laughs> well, you know what's interesting when you said about seeing the quilts for the first time. It's been, this will be our 49th year. I still just get the shivers early yeah. in the morning Do you? when I see people starting to put the quilts up and I just get tears in my eyes. I know. I know uh, it is feeling. magical. Yeah, I know the feeling. It's just nothing will take its place. And, um, yeah, to watch those quilts go up, it's just, um, I get down, I go down to the store at about seven o'clock and then watch, watch the quilts go up. So it's really, really fun. You know, I feel like I'm standing in a museum when I come to Freddy's and I've been here numerous times and one of the first times I remember asking her about all the different paint colors. And there are 37 different paint colors in this house. So it's pretty amazing to talk about color. But the other thing I've noticed is how she uh, just loves ceramics. I mean, you see plate collections in almost every room. And she has lots of figurines that are ceramics. Um, she collects vases. Um, I mean, there's just a bit of everything. And one time my granddaughters were here with me and uh, the younger one went around and counted all the rabbits. 
and she just had the best time. She was so impressed with all Freddie's rabbits. Um, I just threw some quilts out on some of the furniture so that you could see more of her work. And it, the feeling here is how everything goes together. And who would be brave enough to do all this but Freddie? And I really think she is a very brave woman. So this has been really fun. You guys, thank you so much. Oh, it looks so wonderful having you. And it is in such a great cause that um, I am thrilled to be able to do it. So let's talk about the cause, all right? This quilt show has been going on for 49 years. That's what this year is going to be, 49 years. And when you think about it, it was just a twinkle in somebody's <laughs> eyes. That's what it was, a twinkle. And now it has grown into this massive show that is an international event, really. You have people come in, do. don't you? Oh yeah. Right. From all over. And when people from sisters travel, like to Europe and things, yeah. and somebody will ask where they're from, they say sisters, invariably some says, do you know that quilt show? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and 
<laughs> we didn't intend for all that twinkle, to happen. Twinkle in your eye, <laughs> yeah. Jean. And so the thing that's so great about it, okay, it's got a huge global appeal, but let's just talk about the specifics of the show, what makes it so special. First of all, quilts are not juried in. That's a big deal. If you get your quilt in before all the spaces are taken, your quilt is in. That's right. It's also free, right? And that's a big deal, which means no parking fees or anything like that. And I believe some of the quilts the artists might be selling, correct? Mm-hmm. So it, it's, uh, okay. I don't know if I've ever said this to you, but to me, it's the Woodstock of quilting. Oh. <laughs> Only we keep our clothes on, okay? <laughs> so, so people, this costs a lot of money, all right? And you might think, wow, because the store's super packed and all that. No, it costs money, and this is such a valuable event for quilters worldwide, for the Town of Sisters, for, well, everybody who's ever attended or is planning to attend. So if you want to be a friend of the show, I mean, if you've been there, how could you not be a friend? And if you're planning to go, we need friends. Jean, how do we do this? <laughs> well, the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show has a website, and S-O-Q-S. Okay, Sisters Outdoor. Door quilt, quilt show, show. <laughs> and on that site uh, you can become a friend of the show okay and it's interesting because people always say well it's free to attend but they don't realize <laughs> we now need an, an executive director <laughs> and so we are hiring you know her and there are just a lot of costs involved um, with permits from oh, you're well, able to go really <laughs> yeah well you have to have a permit with ODOT mm -hmm. for traffic and then with the city and public works and make sure everything gets cleaned up and so it's there's not, all kinds of things I was gonna say it's not just like hey let's go hang quilts there's a whole lot more to it and I I want to be a friend of the show I'm a friend yeah. of the show so and we really appreciate all our friends of the show exactly so Jean thank you and thank you, and both of you. I'm gonna say, and Freddie. Oh, what yeah, what are we? Such fun. I know my buddies are here. Yeah, yeah. And hey, help spread the word, right? Because we want this to continue forever and ever. Amen. I am so happy you could be here today with us and just see the beauty that you experience in this gorgeous home with this wonderful woman. And you know, she didn't even start quilting till she was 60 years old. She had raised five boys and her one of her daughter-in-laws introduced her to quilting. She did everything by hand for two years and then she became very friendly with her sewing machine. So thank you for being here with us and taking part in this glorious day. Every time I watch it, I almost cry. <laughs> Just amazing. And, and, and yes, I'm going to tell you if you came in late, because I can watch who's here and the numbers, go back and watch it. It resides on YouTube. I would ask you to share it with people because we really need to protect this quilt show and keep it going. And everybody needs a Freddy everybody. Somebody put in the comment, she's a national treasure, international treasure. Just, she, she's still teaching, okay? Also, three years ago, the quiltshow.com, and I think I mentioned at the beginning, did a show with Sujata Shah at my house, and then we did a field piece with Freddie, and that's when we celebrated her 90th birthday. So Sujata Shah, or just go up and search Freddie Moran in the search bar. All right. Oh, I, uh, I'm going to see her tomorrow, okay? So what's coming up? <clears throat> I got an email from a person who said, are you familiar with my bed, this book? Oh, I am very familiar with this book. The illustrations on it are amazing, and they're all three-dimensional little um, 
pieces that are put together. Uh, the, the stories by Rebecca Bond and the illustrations are by Sally Mavor. So I forgot about this book. Well, not completely because I was in my drawer the other day with all my wool stuff and I went, oh, I love this book. So I actually got hold of Sally and she got back to me promptly. And on Monday, we're going to be celebrating her work she, and even learn how she does some of this stuff. It is absolutely mind-boggling. And I think that it's an abs a perfect entry to when we do our wool work. And I've got to pull colors after. Uh, I've got to go pull colors after this, okay? Then on Wednesday, Ricky is doing an interview. Oh, great. Where's my, where's my, where's my notes? Uh, with Jonathan and Beth Evans. They have taken Batik to an art form that you will not believe. People ask about this behind me, my Noah's art. It's not that, but it's down that genre. It is artwork. And then I'm thinking the next Monday, because I know a lot of you have gotten Berninas and may take advantage of, you know, this. I'm going to do things I love about my machine, including how to use the needle threader. <laughs> including that. So thank you so much for joining. I, I knew you would love it. I've gotten, I've, a few people have seen it and they've cried. Okay. I love Freddie and I will see her tomorrow. She is going to be thrilled. I'm going to tell you right now, this is the most viewed one we've ever seen that people have watched live. Mm -hmm. it, it's that. Okay. So I'm going to say, Jody, you wish you had one ounce of the talent that Freddie has in a pinky finger. She said something very important there, and it's that you have to do the work. And I really believe that. I think, I think that like when you learn to draw, you have to draw. When you learn to do this, you have to do this. And then that can put me to a plug of why you need to be a member of the quiltshow.com. I mean, we almost have 500 shows with people like Freddie that they may tickle something in your creativity that you didn't even know was there. So I encourage people to take classes like Freddie did in the beginning. I encourage people to become a member and just let open your heart to new creativity. That's what I would say to you. So happy new year. Yay. I will see you Monday and we're going to celebrate Sally. Sally Mavor. I hope I'm saying that right. Mavor. So, yeah. Yeah. Please share this. Please share this presentation we did today. Okay. It needs to be seen by everybody on YouTube.